blast off. Hi, Jim Ziegler, the Alpha Dog. I've got an exciting show. I got one of the, <laughs> this has been a, a roller coaster relationship. Me and my friend, Kerry Wise, <laughs> you know, started off kind of rocky and it got really good. Uh, we're, we're lifelong friends. Um, Carries with True Car. We'll talk about that. No matter what you believe about True Car, uh, they are aboard with the dealers, and we're going to talk about that. But first, I need to do a little housekeeping. Before I do the housekeeping, uh, I, I got to put it on different social networks and make sure it's a public broadcast. I do a little technical thing first. I'll try to entertain you. Okay. Here we go. If you miss the train I'm on. You will know that I have gone. You can hear the whistle blow. I'm working. 500 miles. 500 miles. 500 miles. 500 miles. I'm working. 500 miles. Got it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. We are public. Uh, we are on the air with my good friend, Carrie Re Reese Wise. Hi. Hi, Jim. You're using my maiden name, Reese. <laughs> well, yeah, well, hey, You're bringing Karen me back. Reese Wise. Uh, well, but you know why I did that? Why? Because women with three names must be important. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I go by Carrie Wise. I'm a traditionalist when it comes to names. But on Facebook, okay. I add Reese in. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, you know, so many women are so important, they have to have three names. You I'm, know, not that, I'm not that important. <laughs> you know, my sister... My sister, Kat, uh, Callie, her real name's Kathleen, but uh, Callie Ziegler. Uh, she was Kathy when she was growing up. But anyway, Kathleen Callie Ziegler, she married a Ziegler. You're kidding me. No, her name is Callie Ziegler Ziegler. <laughs> she, <laughs> that's hilarious. Isn't that cool? Oh, oh, she's she, lucky to keep her name. She is a... Oh, I didn't have to change your driver's license or go through any of that. Oh, no, that's awesome. Uh, they live in Fayetteville, North Carolina. She's a real prominent real estate agent, very successful. I'm very proud of her. Um, but yeah, she met this guy at Florida State University when they were going to school. They were in a band together. They were always standing in line alphabetically together, you know. Wow. Andrew. I should have done that. Kept my name. I mean, to keep your yeah. name. I gotta tell you, men don't understand changing your name is is a pain. Like you oh, say, you I gotta change imagine. your record and everything. So that's and, nice. You know, you know, like so some women in the car business get married. I said, your husband needs to change his name. <laughs> Take your like last that. name. I like we're, we're, oh hey, we got Patrick Sanders, Bill Schomburg, Randy Tucker. And the famous Anthony Alagona already on the show with us. Oh, some of my favorites. Is that Patrick O'Brien on? Patrick O'Brien should. Yes, he just showed Isn't up. That? All right. Hey, Patrick. Patrick. Patrick is another one of my very favorite people. He's, he, he is one of the ultimate experts in indie, indie lot performance. He, oh, wait a second. He's sucking up to you here. Patrick O'Brien. Carrie is hands down one of my favorite automotive people. I feel the same way about Patrick. You know what I love about Patrick? He never stops learning. Like he no. already knows he's an expert. It, we all know he's an expert at selling cars, at running dealerships, but he's always wanting to learn. And from the very beginning, when I first started speaking, he'd always be in the front row at my session. So I'm a big fan of his as well. Brian Duke's aboard. Yo, dog. Hi, Brian. Anthony, you said was on. Bill. Yeah. Patrick. Yeah, Brooke. we got some good uh, ones uh, on yeah. there. Oh, uh, excuse me. Brian Duke, Pat, Patrick, Patrick Sanders. Susan Chalker. Susan's coming to Battle Plan. Hi, Susan. Yeah, Susan works for Tron Collie Motors, where I was, I did a stint as an F&I manager. And um, Tina Bolin's aboard. Hi, Tina. Super now, talented to woman. I think Tina's coming to Battle Plan. I, I guess we got hundreds of people coming to this thing. I mean, but I think Tina is coming to yeah, Tina's Battle Plan. Yeah, as well. Oh, I'm telling you, it's we built a pretty good audience up in a very short time here. So, anyway, Carrie, I met you when you were still with Edmonds. Well, yes, I didn't actually meet you. <laughs> no, you. We were in the same room. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who wants to tell the story, Jim? It's a classic. I don't want, we've told the story before. Um, told the story before. I blew you off the first time we met. I was I was still mad at True Car at the time, and and I was mad at Edmonds, yeah. and uh, you know, and I I just sat in the front row of your of your session at the dealer socket event just to intimidate you. Yes, it was, and you did a good job of that. I tried to keep my cool. <laughs> Because, you know, when you're, in the, when you're in the water with the sharks or the dogs, in this case, you know, I, I, I knew you were smelling the blood. Um, oh. But, yeah, you sat in the front row and you filmed me. I remember you had your iPad out. Yeah, I was filming you with my iPad. Yeah, and, and then you didn't want to say hi to me after the presentation was done. You, you chased me down out. the aisle trying to say hi to me, and I wouldn't say <laughs> hi to you. I wouldn't even talk to you. <laughs> I have tough skin. I have tough skin. I knew I wouldn't give up on you, Jim. Oh, and you've been a speaker at five battle plans? Yeah, this has been, yeah, it's been five years. So, yeah, about five five or, or six, yeah. Five or six or more. I and you've never done the same subject twice. No, no. In fact, we got a new one this battle plan. I got to bring what, something new. What are we talking about? So, I think for me, I mean, for most people who haven't seen me speak, um, I take a little different an approach than, than most speakers. You know, for me, understanding the consumer insights is what I have a passion for. And, and not just a research standpoint. Jim, I heard what you said about research, right? And how vendors kind of use research to sell their products or their oh, points. There are some bogus researchers <laughs> out there. There, there yes. are people who are absolute criminals. I mean, documented criminals disguising themselves as research companies. Absolutely. Unbelievable. You can make research to say whatever you want it to say, but I think what's more important and what the advantage I have working at TrueCar is that we track a lead down to a sale. And so it's not just about, you know, doing marketing research. It's about understanding what happens when someone submits a lead and, and what actions take that person down to the sale. And so I'll be sharing. I, I like to look at that kind of insights. I also like to study the top performing dealers out there. So most of the time I'm speaking at conferences, it's about understanding how best dealers market and how best dealer dealers um, work. You these. are everywhere. I, I'm i telling you, honest to goodness, where's Waldo? Nothing. Where's Terry? You know, oh, Sean Hayes is aboard. Sean's Hi, aboard. Sean. And hi, Sean. Sean He's Hayes amazing. in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it, from NADA this year, I spoke at NADA this year. I think we were, we're probably going to do 12 conferences at least this year. So, um, you're right. I mean, I'm, I, I'm everywhere. But Internet Battle Plan is one of my favorites, for the record. Absolutely. I got to say it. Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what. We we moved back to Atlanta. Debbie and I are now living in Chateau Lawn Country Club. We've moved up here. You know, we uh, retirement community was good. You know, we, we lived in the villages for two years. We gave it a shot. And I, I didn't retire, but I was living in a community of retired people. Yes. And everybody knows I'm, I'm in my early 70s. I mean, I don't make a secret about that. Uh, I found out one thing about retirement communities. I don't like old people. <laughs> I should not <laughs> laugh. I can't see you retiring ever. No, I I'm mean, a, I just can't <laughs> see it happening. Um, die on stage. I want to die on stage in front of a cheering standing ovation. I want to grab my heart. Ah, there goes Jim. <laughs> that would be epic. <laughs> I don't want you to die, though. I'm just saying, if you die, it would be epic if you were doing what you love. If I'm standing on stage in front of a cheering audience, you know, I'm not being disrespectful, but I saw a guy die in church praying one time. No way. Had a heart attack right in the middle of a service and died. I'm thinking, he got the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> he was already with God, and then he went straight there. No, he, was wow. God, he was talking to God when he went down. So, yes. I mean, that, wow. that is a one-way ticket, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> that is the right place to be if you're going to die. I must have been like 16 years old when that happened. You know, just, oh, man, that's traumatic. That's traumatic. But, yeah, you're not ready. I, I couldn't see you. I knew when you moved to that retirement community, it looked really nice, but I had a feeling. You you move back. I had a feeling. Most of those people could hide their own Easter eggs. <laughs> I'm telling you, there was a, a Walgreens in our neighborhood down there, and at the Walgreens, everybody down there drives these golf carts, 
And the Walgreens has a drive up window. It's the second largest Walgreens in the United States for prescriptions. You know, twice, three times a day, somebody would drive up to their drive in window and try to make a bank deposit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I thought I'd chat with you a minute or two as our audience builds up. We're getting a yes. pretty good audience. Yes, there. that is too funny. But no, it looks like you. It looks like you, your house where you moved is nice. And I'm glad you're back. Ooh, Debbie, Debbie has had a ball, you know, because we moved from a 10,000 square foot house to a 2,300 square foot house in, in the villages. So wow. Debbie gave away or we gave away all of the furniture to the buyers here in Atlanta. 10,000 square feet of furniture, we gave it away with, with the sale. So then we, we furnished 2,300 feet down in Florida, which wasn't difficult. But now we've moved back to 6,500 square feet. And Debbie has really spent a high six digits on furnishing this house. I wouldn't know what, to, I'm a Californian. I wouldn't know what to do with 6,500 square feet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, 6,500 square feet in California would be what, about $3 million? At least, at least. At this, house is mean, right, this house is right at a million. Wow. We, we were blessed to pay cash. That's amazing. Good we for wrote you. A check Good for you, for, and Debbie. You know, I mean, I'm not the wealthiest guy in the car business, but we got a couple of Zords stashed away. <laughs> <laughs> You've done well, Jim. You've done well. We've done well. You know, I, yeah. I got grits on the table. We do. Well, anyway, tell me about what you're going to do at Battle Plan. Let, we got a big enough audience. Let's talk a little car business right now. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, my topic is the digital marketing myths that can hurt your bottom line. And so I'm going to talk about three, three digital marketing myths. And so it's about, um, you know, kind of how, what, how we're marketing, what channels are we using to market? And I heard you talk a lot that about people believe that aren't true myths that, yeah, that, that people believe that are not true, that are, are unfounded. And we hear a lot of this about, for example, there's a lot of buzzwords in the industry, digital retailing, for example, right? That's the hot thing right now, right? Everyone's buying a car online. And so I'm going to share some data um, that's going to put that in perspective because I do think, hey, that might be where we're going, but okay, consumers yeah. aren't exactly there yet. True Car is one of the few people supplying data that I actually trust your data. And, I, I, and I'll tell you why before you come up with this, because most people are selling attribution. And attribution is a real science. Mm -hmm. But there are some real bogus attribution tabulators out there. I mean, they are absolutely criminal. They're taking huge amounts of money from the people they're doing the research for the alleged alleged research. <laughs> million dollars. <Yeah. laughs> Dr. Evil. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. I mean, from a from an attribution standpoint, and I'm, I'm going to touch on that as well in terms of, you know, trying to understand where you put your marketing dollars, which is tricky, right? Because you can do it yourself. I've heard you talk a lot about SEO and SEM, and, and that's really important for a dealer to spend money there. Um, there's obviously third parties out there. There's social media. Where do you spend your money? But at the end of the day, um, you need to see the ROI. And, uh, you know, like you're saying, there are vendors out there, not just third parties, but also agencies as well. Oh, that yeah. there, there are, are some bogus agencies out there. Most of them are getting co-op from the manufacturers. <laughs> I, I want to call out both because, you know, the reality is that, Third parties are vendors, but Google's a vendor as well, right? They're they're all vendors, and so you got to keep all your vendors accountable. And, and what's interesting over the last uh, six months, I've been spending a lot of time with our dealers, just understanding all of their marketing spend, and it's amazing that they're not always aware of what they're getting, or they're focused on eyeballs and impressions instead of things that actually result in sales. Eyeballs and impressions don't sell cars. Cuba Gooding Jr. Show me the money. <laughs> Show that's me it. the deals. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's True Car. And, you know, people, people, hot and cold on True Car, and and you know, I I was your biggest critic at one time. I I campaigned um, rigorously, but you know, you changed your program. I like your yes. program. 
uh, whether you like true car, don't like true car. One thing we always say about true cars, it's a deal. You no, got a sale. No, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I remember the time when you were, you were boycotting true car. What was that? 2012. I wasn't oh, no, I didn't with the company. Oh, I shouldn't say no, that no. out loud. No, no. Okay. You were boycotting. Hold on. I let me bo- correct I bo- that. I we don't boycott. <laughs> I stand corrected. You weren't boycotting true car, but you expressed your concerns very loudly about true car. And effectively. Uh, I, and I wasn't with the company at the time, but you know, there were, there were a lot of changes. There was a lot of focus on kind of, uh, you know, pricing and low pricing. And we, we made a lot of changes so that you know we we focus on a fair deal and not just the lowest price and but 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 more importantly you know what you're talking about tying it back to the sale you know we believe we shouldn't get paid if a lead doesn't close because if we're not focused on that lead closing we can generate leads we can generate leads all day long that's not that hard to do but generating a lead that's actually going to be someone who's in the market ready to buy is a little trickier are and you so, familiar with, with a competitor of yours, Trilogy? I've heard of Trilogy. Yeah, I've heard now, of Trilogy. Trilogy mostly does business with the manufacturer. The OEMs, yes. Yeah. But now Trilogy has some very accurate stats. And, and they do um, the sales matching as well, right? I mean, they tie it back to the, the sale, as right. I understand it. Trilogy says that leads have a 3 to 18% possibility of closing. And who is selling you those leads know which ones are the 3% leads and they know which ones are the 8, 18% leads. And, you know, I've seen people that try to cancel an alleged lead provider that was not performing. And all of a sudden they started getting all these sales because they pumped mm-hmm. a bunch of those 18% leads into the mix. <laughs> mm, got it. Got it. Yeah. Cause they, yeah. Because the lead brokers were selling a bunch of three percent leads, right? Detroit and now, trading yeah, company, no, Detroit no, and, trading and, company. I didn't say that. <laughs> no <laughs> comment. <laughs> but, no, but, but you're right. I mean, I think I think at the end of the day, all of the advertisers. I mean, you can attract consumers. You can get somebody to fill out a lead form, but getting somebody who's qualified and ready to buy. One of the things that a lot of people don't know about TrueCar is, you know, in the past you've heard of. Um, people say, well, True Car is just t- you know, stamping the customer so that they can get credit for the sale. And if you've ever gone through the True Car experience, it, it takes you know, 10 plus steps to submit a lead. It's actually not that easy to submit a lead through the program. And more importantly, people don't realize that True Car powers 500 different sites. So we're not just TrueCar.com, we're USAA, we're Geico and Allstate and all these member well, organizations. Well, the one that I like the best is the Costco program. So Costco technically, just for the record, is a competitor. So we don't power Costco. It's Sam's Club, I think, that you're thinking of. We power Sam's Club. Sam's Club, Club, Sam's Club. Yes. The Costco is actually separate, but we power Sam's Club. And USAA, those people are going to buy where USA tells them to buy. That's it. That's it. And when you look at a USA customer, I mean, they're like 92% loyal to USAA. And so you have to be, in order to access our true car dealers through the USA program, you have to be a member of USA. You have to be logged in. So there's no Mickey Mouse at gmail.com that you can you can put in a lead form when you're coming from USA. So so anyways, you know, that that's what we're emphasizing. And I, I heard you talking to Bobby, the interview with Bobby was really great because she hit on something that is so important, which is customizing your approach based on where the consumer is coming from. A USA customer has to be treated differently than your run-of-the-mill true car customer. They all have to be treated a little differently. They absolutely do. Uh, the, uh, Randy Tucker on the sidebar. Yeah. Okay, Carrie, what are the top three reasons a dealer should sign up with true car? Okay, number one, our one. affinity network. Number one. <laughs> you, want, you want a drum roll? Drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> Thank you, Randy, for allowing me to sell, by the way. Um, so, no, number one, I, I would say, is our affinity network. So we have 8 million consumers that aren't just coming through TrueCar.com. They're coming through 500 different automotive buying sites that we power. They're white-labeled. USA, um, I told you, Sam's Club. All state. Is Allstate one of yours? Allstate. So there's 12, 12 of the largest insurance companies we power. Uh, there's only one that we don't power, State Farm. So we're powering 12, Allstate, Nationwide, Geico, um, American Express's auto buying program. I, I get 
I get mail all the time, email from American Express, every bill from Allstate, I get buy a car through us. You know. Exactly. Yeah. And let me tell you something about the insurance companies, just to throw that on. When someone totals their car, they go to their insurance company to, to make a claim. The insurance company pushes them through the auto buying program. That lead is now in the dealer, our dealer system that says this person totals their car and they have a $10,000 check in hand. So, so it's, it's those total loss customers as well. So Randy, number one is the affinity network. Um, number two, I would say is that we tend to attract consumers that are um, ready to buy. They're not there to research. They're not three years out. About 65% of our sales happen within a week of submitting the lead. So when we look they're, at the- They're not buy, 60 days out. Not 60 days out. And I would Eliana say- Raggio just said this, Roger just sent this big meme waving at us. I mean, oh, I love Eliana. She's so talented. Have you seen her she, on a stage? She just lights up a stage. I love Eliana. I mean, yes. I've known her as long as I've known you. I mean, yeah, she's right there. We, we got some pretty good people on the sidebar here. So, okay, uh, the Affinity yeah. Network, and uh, let's get on with number two. It, 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 that, so the Affinity Networks, the, the fact that they bought, the, number two is the fact that they buy fast. 65% within a week. And I would say number three is the fact that we charge in most states, not in all states, but in most states, we charge only when that lead closes. So it's so, a deal. Whether you like the gross or not, you set it. And I should add that if I could add that as a fourth is that you set your own pricing. That is a misconception that TrueCar sets your pricing as a dealer. So, you know, if you're working in the internet and BDC and you don't like your, your pricing on TrueCar, you got to talk to that manager in your store that went in the pricing tool and set the pricing. Because you're going to show up no matter what your pricing is. If you're the closest dealer, you're going to show up to the consumer. Exactly. So, like I say, people, people hit me from all sides. Ziggler, you, you know, you used to go against TrueCar. Now you're for TrueCar. Is it because they're sponsoring you? Well, you know, sponsoring me does help, but, <laughs> but but there are people that would love to sponsor my events that I will not allow to sponsor my events. Well, I'll just say this, that, you know, I can't say true cars for everybody. I mean, there are different um, advertising mediums and channels and they're depending on your region, you know, we may be better for you or not. Um, you know, dealers that obviously are near military um, locations love us, obviously with the USA customers, we have about 12,000 franchise dealers on and 4,000 independent. So we're working for a lot of dealers, but you, you know, you got to see if it works for you and your brand and in your region. Well, that's the truth. I mean, uh and the thing about, about True Car, you know, we've, we've had our ups and downs. Uh, and like I say, you sponsor my events and people have, have criticized me, well, uh, True Car sponsoring your events and, you you know, you changed your mind. But no, there, there are some big, big players that would throw close to seven digits at me if I bring them in the fold. I mean, big money. I believe that. I believe that. I, I've been offered some big money. If I would just forgive some people and let them into the fold, and I, my my morals and my ethics will not let me do that. I don't need the money that bad. So I can <clears throat> attest to that because before I came to TrueCar, I worked at another company that you didn't particularly like. And as charming as I am, you would not talk to me. <laughs> 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 Listen, I brought out the charm. I mean, I it was on full effect and. Jim still walked away from me. So, <laughs> well, you and I have become oh. such great friends. You know, the pioneer woman, the island girl, the hip hop girl. I know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I got you in all these different visions well, of you. Well, I, I, we were talking about that earlier. I, so, so Jim is laughing because I, I went camping one day. I love hip hop. Um, I was on the island with braids and cornrows the next day. And I'm like, I don't like to be defined, right? Like, why right. should we be defined? I, I'm an athlete, but I'm also feminine. I, you know, I'm a frontier woman. I love hip hop. <laughs> Fun <laughs> stuff. You know, you can't put us in a box. None of us because we don't fit. So yes. Internet battle plan. What do you think? You, you saw the lineup. What do you think of the crowd? 
I got to tell you, I am so excited about this one. Probably more than any of them. We've I've been to some great internet battle plans, but you got an all-star lineup. I mean, uh, I just saw you added Glenn Lundy, which yes, is amazing. I did. He is awesome and a great. He's got a keynote, right? Yeah. Did you see the the, the post I made that Ed O'Neill is not the keynote speaker? At <laughs> Ed O'Neill is a marvelous actor. But no, I, we didn't get Ted uh, Al Bundy. We got Glenn Lundy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Al Bundy. It was Glenn, Glenn Lundy. <laughs> Lundy. Glenn Lundy. Yeah, that was a good one. Glenn is a hot. He's hot right now. You know, he's oh, on fire. I'm telling you. And yeah, you know, he's a real rock star. I, I love that guy. You know. Absolutely. You know. And, it's going to be interesting. I got I got Lopes on the on the stage. Lopes is going to help me MC a little bit. Uh, he's going to be the opening speaker, and then right after that, uh, I've got uh, Lundy being the keynote speaker. Oh, the second second slot of the day because there'll be some stragglers coming in. I want him to have the full audience. And Ray then, is one of my favorites. He's oh, one of my favorites, and he's he's the host now. I mean, really, him and Eliana. Oh. I'll tell you, he's become the Bob Barker of the car business, you know? (laughs) (laughs) He has. He has. And, um, you know, Bobby Heron, the BDC diva, I'm calling her. I love Bobby. And it's, you know, everyone, you can see her talent. I mean, she knows what she's talking about. Um, Let me just tell you, when when I first started working with True Car, I had so much respect for her because... She had, you know, issues or had heard things about True Car. And I remember she pulled me aside and just had a conversation, a real frank conversation, asking me questions about what we changed. And I just, I have so much respect for that because it's easy just to say, oh, I don't like this company, but it's a different thing when you want to understand what's happening. So I have a lot of respect and she can multitask better than anyone. The interview you did with her the other day. When she had to walk out of the restaurant and go into the parking oh. lot, I've never seen someone so calm under distress. <laughs> well, did you hear the interference that we had? The, the, she was yes. in a Chinese restaurant, and we hear these very loud conversations, obviously in some Asian language, you know, and we're hearing these conversations, and she couldn't hear it, and she couldn't understand it. Bobby, we can't hear you. So she... <laughs> picks up her laptop and walks out on the parking lot and does the, in a hundred degree weather, does, did the entire interview in the parking lot. That was, Now that's improvising. That is improvising. Yeah, kudos to Bobby. I she love it. Amazing. So anyway, she is, I have trouble getting a hold of her nowadays because truthfully she, she's everywhere. I mean, me personally, keeping up with you, Keeping up with Bobby, keeping up with Elise, you guys are, are crisscrossing the country. You're all out. You know, I got five million miles with Delta, and I think you guys are going to catch up with me. <laughs> it has its perks in terms of points, and when you go on vacation. But yeah, I know I'm all over the place, and it's amazing to see entrepreneurs like Bobby and Elise. I mean, they have so much talent and doing it on their own, you know, doing their own things. Um, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see them doing it. You know, it's good to see women out there representing in that way. Speaking of women, you see how many I've got on the program. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a board member of women in automotive. So that's a, that's a passion right. Of mine, right? is having more women in this industry. You mean and you, girl, wait, wait, wait a minute. Girls can sell cars. Oh, come on. <laughs> Girls can do, you can have, quote, anything, right? It could be anything. But no, we're relational creatures, right? I mean, you're yeah. relational creatures. And it's a car, the car business is a people business. I mean, you're, you're selling cars, but you're really selling yourself. You're, you're a person. You're selling your 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 value as a, as a salesperson in terms of helping that consumer, um, guiding them through the process. So, yes, girls, of course, can sell cars. We could do anything. Oh, now, did you not know I was being facetious? <laughs> hey, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the, the, the guy that's listening right now. I'm not talking oh, to you. No, you you've know. always been amazing. You've always, I mean, the first internet battle plan I did, what, 2015? I think we were in Detroit, I want to say. I feel like it was Detroit. But, I mean, you've always had a lot of women on the stage. 
you know, the representing. The first one we did was in Detroit. And um, Mike was still with you in those days, Mike Timmons. Yeah, Mike Timmons. And, um, you know, Mike had had some conversations with me because first time I met Mike, I mistreated him horribly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't talk to you. Mike Mike was senior vice president of True Car. He was like third, second in charge. He was way up there. Yep. And it was a, at a CDK party back when CDK was Cobalt, a Cobalt party at the NADA convention. And this is when the, the True Car Wars were happening. He walked up, stuck his hand out. Hi, I'm Mike Timmons. And I slapped his hand away. I, said, I, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Well, I remember when I joined True Car in 2015. And at that time, you had made amends. But I, you called me, I think, on the first day I joined True Car. And I thought you never knew my name. I, I remember you had a session in the past and you said, hi, Carrie. It was like I was waiting for you to leave that other company. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. No, I, I'm aware of a lot more things in the car business than some people give me. <laughs> yes, no, you're on top of it. No, you, I think you know we were talking about reinventing ourselves. And I mean, you've absolutely done that if you think about yeah. like how long you've been in the industry, it's easy to bucket someone like that and say, oh, they're 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 doing things that say based on the past, they're old school. It's like, but no, you look at your speakers and, and your internet balance <laughs> plan. I mean, you got some of the cutting edge things and marketing and sales that are happening right now. So 43 years. Wow. I'm yeah. 42 years old. I walked into car dealership in 1976. And I had wow. been a general sales manager of a major radio station. I had been an executive. And here I was de depressed and divorced and feeling sorry for myself. And I'm going to sell cars till I can get a good job, you know. And I had I had no idea this was going to be a career. I They gave demos in those days and I needed a free car. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, no, I mean, we're the, I, I consider us the industry of second chances. I mean, that's really, it's the industry of second chances. And, you know, I remember I, I, I used to work with foster kids a lot um, and I would mentor them. And I had this big event at a foster, you know, uh, kid event where there was like a hundred foster kids there and we were going to do a career panel. And I made sure that I had someone in the car business on that panel. And those kids didn't even think about, you know, the car business as a profession. But, you know, I had a guy on the panel, a former gangbanger, who had risen to the very top of one of the largest dealer groups um, in F and I, and so we're we're that business. That's what we love it so much is that you could you could make mistakes in your past life and then be killing it. You know, yeah. make hundreds of thousands of dollars. One of my dealerships, um, in the in the mid eighties, was in in the hood. You know, it was a dealership I didn't hang around at night. Where was this? In Decatur, Georgia. Okay. And I didn't hang around at night, didn't wear my jewelry. <laughs> you know, I, had convict, I had convicted felons on the sales force, and some of them were on work release. They went back to jail every night. No way. One, one, ev one evening I was there, which was rare for me to be in the dealership in the evenings. And here comes three of my salespeople in handcuffs and orange jumpsuits going out to the van. Oh, and, no. And I told, that was a big old boy. I said, I told that jailer, I said, if you ever march these people through my showroom again, I will throw your ass through the plate glass. <laughs> they were arresting the guys. No, the they were taking them back to, to jail. Oh, they were, they were on the work release. Wow. I mean, they took them back every night. <laughs> you know, oh my gosh. I told him, much. look, I did not sign up for this social program. <laughs> <laughs> I inherited it. <laughs> wow. wow. And they started and, and the salespeople there, like I say, they started calling me Darth Vader. And in the hood that gets shortened. So eventually I just became Vader. <laughs> <laughs> and then the respectful people called me Mr. Vader. <laughs> That is too much. Yeah. I wonder where they are now. And there was a uh, there was a, a guy that worked for me named Al Adderhold, and he was also named Vader. And sometimes they get us confused. 
<laughs> Vader one and Vader two. Well, he was actually <laughs> Vader one. I think he was Vader before I was Vader, you know, just different, different days. So much, but that's a car business, you know? I mean, people coming from all walks of life. Eric Gale. Oh, Eric, what a bright, talented man. Eric is, is going to be talking about, uh, you know, he's the CEO of the Cardinelli Group. Now, we're talking about, I don't know how many they got, 16, 17 stores. They got a, a yeah, throughout stores, California, a California, out west. Yep. And they're the number one internet dealership chain in the country. They're selling more cars, internet sales, technology sales, more cars than Auto Nation, Penske, any of them. They are the number one internet entity online dealership in the world. And Super he has spoken at five battle plans and never repeated the subject. People yeah. love him. I give him an extra 15 minutes. He has an hour on stage. The rest of you got 45 minutes. He could talk about so much. I mean, beyond their success on the internet, just from a leadership standpoint, like when oh, you meet yeah. Eric, you know why they're so successful. And he is the reason a lot of dealer principals come to Battle Plan just to see him and meet him and hear what he has to say from their viewpoint. So you know, true. You know about internet Battle Plan, there's going to be fifty percent decision makers in that room. Yes, that's, and, and it's amazing they have him, you know, on the stage there. And you need that. You need not only, you know, some of the conferences, you have a lot of vendors, but you need the dealers, right? They're in the trenches and somebody at his level, particularly, we're not just talking about a dealer principal in one store. I mean, he's running a, a successful group. Well, you know, I, I don't recommend other people's conferences except digital dealers. You know, I've, I was there at the beginning of Digital Dealer. I was the keynote speaker for Digital Dealer 2, 4, 5, 6, 8. I was a keynote speaker for a bunch of them. I was a workshop speaker. I was a writing for the magazine in those days, Dealer Magazine. I was I was number one red columnist in the industry for 14 years with wow. dealers. So Mike Roscoe and I, back in the early days, um, we had our ups and downs personally. But, you know, it, and, and we're, we're friends today, by the way. But Digital Dealer is still the one conference I will recommend. I don't recommend the others. I don't even like some of the others. I think some are a waste of time. Some are, are good, but they're competitors to me. And I don't trash them. I don't, I don't endorse them. You know, they're, you know it's, it's like for, for endorsing a Chevy dealer. I don't do that. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> Not what I do. But I, I do like Digital Dealer. But the difference in Battle Plan and Digital Dealer is Digital Dealer has a bunch of breakout sessions. There's 10 speakers, 15 speakers at the same time. Yes. We've got one speaker at one time in front of the entire audience in one big ballroom. We're a smaller boutique conference. We're going to have several hundred people there. But everybody hears every speaker. Yes, I think that's so important. And also just the networking. I mean, I'm just finding that it you can get lost at really big conferences. But, you know, whenever I go to your conference, I obviously I speak to, it feels like everybody uh, between, you know, the event itself, but also your 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 parties you have. I mean, to oh, me, that cocktail reception. <laughs> magic happens. We don't have a live band this time. The band... Okay. The band couldn't make the trip, and I, and you, know, I have one band I'm particularly fond of. They're they're a biker bar band. They're really good. <laughs> love these guys. I mean, you know, just just raw band. I mean, they're they're great, you know. But they they couldn't make it because one of the band members is a high school principal. Okay, so she, so they're in school now. Yeah, so he couldn't make it. You know, digital dealer messed me up this time because they put theirs in August, and I generally have teach at the beach in August. So. When I saw a digital dealer scheduled August, I had to move mine back into September and I lost the band. Okay. So, but I've got a great entertainer, Dan O'Blankowski, the party animal. Now you've seen him before, the DJ that was in Atlanta last time. Yeah, I think I, oh yes, I remember him. Yes. Yeah, Dan, Dan, Dan O'Blankowski, the party, don't call him a DJ. He's not a DJ. No, he's the party animal. He calls himself a celebrationist. Huh? Open bar cocktail reception. 
with finger food. I'm telling you, it's going to be wonderful. And Miss Debbie, you know, Miss Debbie puts these things together. Oh, she does such a great job. Doesn't I mean, she? she that, see, this is what I'm talking about. Women being resourceful, multitasking. Debbie is an example of that. She gets a lot done. And I'm assuming you don't have a team of a thousand people planning this event. Two. Amazing. We do it. Debbie and I do the entire thing. We've got Jay Scarin doing our, our website. Good you guy. know Jay. I'm Jay. And Jay does our our our, any of our advertising PDFs and such, you know, we're very, we're very lean to the bone that just um, people say, well, where's the badges? Badges? Remember the, the movie with Humphrey Bogart? He said, here, poison, where's your badges? And the Mexican bandito said, badges? We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, everybody, I'm assuming yeah. that's going, you know, a lot of people that are going, <laughs> including the dealers. We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> you know, we don't have no badges and we don't release the names of the attendees. <clears throat> no, I remember that. I remember that. No, it's it's a huge value. I think like you're saying, you know, not having to choose which which breakout session you go to. You got a powerhouse lineup of speakers this time. I mean, I'm really I was by watching. That. I was watching some of the digital dealer stuff this week. And I saw some powerful speakers that had eight people in the room. Wow. Because you don't know who's good and who's bad. And <clears throat> how would you like, excuse me, how would you like to be up against Kevin Fry? Oh, exactly. His room is always packed. It's He's going to have together. three or 400 people in his room. And a really good speaker in another room might have six. Yes. And those people were sponsors. They, they paid to be there. They got a dynamic speaker and they got six people in their room. So, when I put together a battle plan, we said all the speakers in one room, one at a time, no breakouts. The entire audience will hear everybody. You don't have to choose. I and mean, you don't have to think, was well, this a good speaker? Is this a bad speaker? And you get in there and it's a bad speaker and you're sitting in the third row. You don't be embarrassed to walk out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, they're, just, and, they're, yeah. and they're high quality speakers. I think, you know, I do a lot of events and not all speakers are created equal, you know? And so yeah. I think, I think when I look at your lineup, I, you know, these are well-respected speakers. They have expertise in their areas and that's what you want when you attend a conference. I had a kid, a kid, I say a kid, I don't know, he's probably 25, 26 years old, just contacted me recently. He said, look, I just got in the car business, just got in the car business and Really, I would like to do what you do. Can I speak at your event? He asked you to speak. He just joined the car business. Uh, yeah, I mean, Green <laughs> Pea wouldn't even describe who he was. I mean, he was <laughs> he was an apprentice Green Pea, and, and he's going he's wanting to speak at Battle Plan. I mean, you God, have to explain. God bless That's you, millennial. God bless you, millennials. But. You, the man at the top of the mountain didn't fall there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not exactly that's not exactly how it works. I think you know I think that's just our society in general, though. I feel like with social media now, um, it's easier to become an expert. It's easier to build a brand, and so our patience level now has dropped. You know, it's easy to look at somebody who's doing well, like someone like you that's doing well and not realize all the years that you put into it. You didn't just arrive. No. It doesn't work like no. that. No. You know? We were fortunate, you know, when, when I blew into Atlanta. And every, every great speaker has a hardship story. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed it all starts out broke, divorced, pissed <laughs> off? I mean, you know, every one of us has a similar story, you know. Uh, I saw a speaker the other day, well, a Lundy. I was homeless. Yes. You know, you, you, every one of the great speakers, <clears throat> we paid our dues. Mm -hmm. I drove into Atlanta 35, 37 years ago when my mattress is tied to the roof of a car I was making weekly payments on because my credit was bad. Wow. I was broke, divorced, angry, and I, I knew some people there and I knew I was going to get a job as a car salesman, but I wasn't sure. What drew, have, you to, what drew you to the car business? Well, because I had been a radio advertising executive. I was with WAPE and WVOJ radio in Jacksonville, Florida. 
And I had been a, a pretty famous DJ. I was Dr. X, a big time radio celebrity. <laughs> it was a different day, you know. <laughs> Back in those days, disc jockeys were local celebrities. I mean, I couldn't pick up a, a bar tab. People would pay my drinks. They'd buy my meals. I mean, anywhere I went, I was a celebrity. They'd announce me from the stage, you know, and you would have laughed your head off. I had long blonde hair. I had hair <laughs> and I bleached it. And long, I look like Prince Valiant with a blonde haircut, you know, long blonde, 1968. And, you know, I was the, the MC for the Miss Jacksonville beauty pageant. I was all these, I was everywhere on the microphone. You know, I was, I was the, the promotions director for the station. And I was the record setting salesman. People know I've set some records in the car business, but I set one record in Jacksonville radio advertising that'll never be broken. I sold a quarter of a million spots in dollars in, in commercials one year in a row or two years in a row, actually. I sold a quarter of a million dollars in commercials and people that would Ziggler, that record's been broken. Yes, but it wasn't broken like I did it at $8 a spot. Right. Today wow. at a hundred dollars a spot, some people have broken that the quarter of a million dollars. But yep. when I was selling eight dollar commercials and sold a quarter of a million dollars two years in a row. Wow. That's a record that you know if you if you if you factor that in, I I don't think anybody's ever gonna break that record. You know, so here I was, I was a radio executive, I was a disc jockey, I was well known and I had a divorce and I, I walked into a car dealership and said I'd like to be a car salesman. Wow. And you're a salesperson. So I'm assuming you, t you use some of those skills. Wait, it was so funny. So funny. I made $4,500 my third month in the business. And in 1976, I was only making about 30000 a year as a top executive. That was big money, 30000 And $4,500 in a month? I never made that kind of money as a radio executive. And it was like, okay, we're off to the races now. <laughs> yeah, that's big. And I found out that car people didn't prospect. In the radio business, that's all I did was prospect. I, I still teach a, a killer, killer prospecting class. So anyway, who else we got at Battle Plan? We got the three SEO people. I'm telling everybody, you need to hire a competent agency. I'm telling everybody, you need a social media agency. You need an agency to handle your business. You know, uh, the days when an employee could do it in-house, in th those days technology has outdistanced you. No, it's, it, it's, it's challenging. I mean, if you think even a vendor like us, I mean, we obviously have a lot of really smart people focused on SEO and SEM, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's what they have to do, building content so that you can attract people. So yeah, I, I'm with you. You got to hire someone, but I think competent is the key word, right? Com There's a Google lot certified. of is out there. And if you your agency sure. isn't Google certified and Bing, Bing, now, Google certified. And there are, are people like yourself, and I'm going to name one of your competitors right now, Car Gurus. I, I think both of you are worthwhile worthwhile providers. I, 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 would, I would hire you myself if I had a dealership. Not just because you're here, not just because you're, you're sponsoring me, but I, I believe that. There are people I would not hire. But I would still, Facebook is an incredible advertising medium today, incredible results. And I need somebody that is Google certified, a great agency. And I've got three SEO experts, actually four speaking. Okay. SEO is the answer. It's, it's one of the answers. Um, we've got Chris Hill from Overtake Digital. Chris, tremendous, yeah. tremendous talent. We've got um, Dave Spanicky from Reunion Marketing. Mm -hmm. And we've got Angus Fox from Wikimotive. Now, he works for Tim Martell. If you know Tim, do you know yeah. Tim Martell? Yeah, well, now we're going to restrain Tim Martell. I have a booty straight jacket and gag him. But, 
<laughs> now, I wouldn't say that if Tim wasn't one of my best friends. I mean, not just a friend. He's one of my best friends. Awesome. He's an absolute wild man. I love Tim Martell. <clears throat> what about Anthony? You have Anthony Algona. Isn't he on? Anthony Algona, phone skills, BDC skills. One of the best. One of the best. I, the I had best. Anthony on yesterday. Um, one of the other ones is going to be Elise Kephart, the YouTube also, diva. The, one of the best. One of my protégés. I remember. I remember. Yeah. Elise. Remember last year, Elise took a true car phone up on stage. She took a call on stage. Remember, she did it live. And closed the deal. And closed the deal. She made the appointment. That was amazing. She, I, was, I was holding my breath when she did that. When she told me she so was going to do that. She asked her, her promotion last year was, I'm going to close a true car lead on 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 live live internet in, in the battle plan. She did it. Yes. And I had nothing to do with it. I didn't give her a customer. She literally found a dealer in the audience and asked him to pull up his CRM. And ran went, into went right into the dealer CRM in the audience and closed the deal. She is the bomb bomb reseller. She does video response advertising. She's the best in the business at video response. Video is the fourth dimension. It shows personality. She is great at it. Absolutely. You know, and she's a testament to your process and how you respond to the lead is, is when we talk about quality of leads, a lot of it is how you respond. Right. So much of it's how you respond. You know, and you, you can't help but love Elise Kephart. I mean, we just celebrated, Elise and I celebrated our eighth anniversary of friendship recently. Yeah, and she spoke at Battle Plan eight years ago. She was so shy. She was just this timid little Asian girl, you know. <laughs> she always refers to herself as that, you know. And I say, well, you've, you've certainly developed a lot since then. <laughs> you know? I mean, Elise is just a beast. I mean, you follow her on, on yeah. Facebook. It's like, I feel like she's always running and exercising and she has her two girls. I just, I don't even know how she does it all, but um, she, she's amazing. And I just, what I love about it is just, it comes down to process. You know, it, it's it, when I, when I look at even the dealers that we work with and the, you know, we, we've studied our highest closing dealers versus dealers that don't close as well. And a lot of it is just they're they're reading the lead and they're using that information to their advantage, right? How versus just I house women, Lisa Copeland. Oh my gosh, should, should we call that's my sister from another Mister? Amazing. She said that. She said that earlier. Woman. And um, I just I can't believe you got Lisa to come. I mean, Lisa's a busy woman she's always speaking and doing she's keynotes. busy and she's expensive and she expensive. she's one of my friends um uh she was the number one fiat dealer in history and i mean if you can sell fiats <laughs> come on you can sell anything huh oh if you can sell fiats i mean but she number one fiat dealer in, in you know when Sergio Marcioni was still alive, he he gave her an award. I mean, just incredible, you know. Fiat, fix it again, Tony. F I A T. You know. <laughs> no, Lisa is. I mean, what she's doing now with her career is just amazing. Cars I mean, her way. From selling her dealership to cars her way, radio show. She's creating her own website. I mean, she's she's just doing it big, and I, I'm proud of her. While Randy Tucker is asking a bunch of true car questions on the sidebar, are you, you're going to have to go on the sidebar after this broadcast. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get back to you, Randy. I see you. I see a couple questions. I'll get back to you, Randy, on those. Yeah, yeah. Do do that by all means. And I, I'm a uh, Christian Jordan. Yes. Now, Christian Jordan is a renegade. I mean, he is. Um, I mean, he doesn't even chase co-op. He could care less about. It. He's a web website developer. He's he claims to be the very best, and I've got clients that also claim he is. And he'll tell you right right out front, he's expensive, expensive and exclusive, and his numbers are really incredible. And he, he is a joy to watch on stage because he gets so tickled with himself. <laughs> he's cracking up at his own joke before he tells it. Too much. Too much. <laughs> I love, I love Christian Jordan. 
I met Christian Jorn, oh golly, 15 years ago, maybe. And there was a dealership, Santa Fe Ford, in Alachua, Florida. And they had a little used car lot on a dirt lot in the middle of a cow pasture with rusting cars on the showroom lot. I mean, it was just awful. And they were selling 200 and something units a month wow. for a dealership that shouldn't have been doing anything like that. And then the rest of the story, I found out they had a college kid doing their website named Christian Jorn going to the University of Florida Gainesville. Oh, that's where you met him. Wow. Yeah. I met him when he was working with Santa Fe Ford in Alachua, Florida, and they were doing numbers that were just unheard of. I was looking, these people couldn't be doing these numbers. Not in that lot. <laughs> you wow. know? So, yeah, I mean, this was a satellite lot to the Ford store. It was not attached to the dealership. That's amazing. So and he, he was doing things there. So he's done some really great numbers. Uh, Christian Jordan is an SEL expert as well. So he's the fourth fourth cog in that wheel. We got Spanicky, we got Wikimotive, and we got um, da, 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 who else? Oh, um, Chris Hill. Yes, so, yeah, Chris we, Hill. We, we got we got the SEO covered from three different flavors. You know, Baskin Robbins. We got three different flavors of SEO. Uh, you need to really. Yeah, something for everybody because I mean I think at the end of the day marketing has to be balanced I mean you, you can't just put all your eggs in one basket so you got to do SEO you got to do SEM obviously you got to do do social and I believe you got to spend money with some third parties like true car so you oh, know I, I believe that too and all around it Steve Lores Steve Lores is from call review. Okay. Yeah. Now, call review is is a very necessary service that monitors your phone calls. What what employee of a dealership do you think blows more deals than virtually any other employee in the dealership? Who I know. Who the receptionist? The receptionist. <laughs> BDC. Of, of all the people in a car dealership, the one person that blows more deals than anybody else is the receptionist. Receptionist. Good. I got it. Because he or she, notice yep. I put he first. Thank you. He I like that. Or she believes it's their job to get the customer to voicemail. They don't believe it's their job to get the customer to their destination. And the other problem we have in a car dealership is managers and salespeople that don't take their calls. They deliberately let their calls go to voicemail. And, well, I don't want to waste my time with a bunch of vendors. And No, 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 no. Consumers that are trying to reach you will not leave a voicemail a high percentage of the time, a higher percentage than will. Especially now. Yes, that's so true. That's so true. You think about a company like Call Review. It's so important mm -hmm. to track phone calls. I mean, I, I've listened to thousands and thousands of phone calls over, over my career. And it's amazing. If you're not monitoring your phone calls, you are missing out on what's really happening. Because I'll like review excellent company, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, you know, I've known those people for a long time. I have the highest level of respect and regard. He's going to be talking about the importance of process. Now, honestly, I don't know what Steve's going to talk about mm -hmm. because I know him from when he worked for the Gurley Leap Organization in, in, in Indiana you know, South Bend. And I knew him when he worked for Mike Leap. And now he's 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 with Call Review and I've got him on stage, I'm, I'm just dying. Mm -hmm. Velko Tuchev. Oh, he's another great trainer. He's, I just talked to him the other day on, on Facebook at least. He's got, I talked to him too. I, he's got the cleanup spot. He's got the last spot of the last day, which isn't the best speaking slot, but he came in late and um, I'm glad he's there because it'll make a lot of people stay longer. You know, people that have flights and such. And Velco is an excellent sales trainer. He's out of Chicago. Yes. You know, absolutely incredible. I don't think I've left anybody out. And if I have, I'm going to be really embarrassed. I'm, I'm doing this from memory right now. Let me. Yeah, I think I think you got them all. That's, that's who I remember. Someone write in and tell us if we forgot somebody. 
Yeah, I'd do that if I did forget anybody. I'm, I'm really. By the way, I want to give a shout out. I see a couple people I know. Susan Chow's on there. Well, Susan's and, coming. Uh, yeah, she's coming. Ashley MacArthur. I met her at Women in Automotive conference. She saw me speak there. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. left one out. I left a very important one out. Oh gosh, who? Mike Cavanaugh from Max Digital. Oh, that's right. I think I've met Mike before. Well, I've met Mike online a couple times, and Mike has got one of the most important subjects at the entire event. I mean, it, Mike, I am so sorry. He's a, I guess he's a CEO. He's a senior vice president at Max Digital. Now, what Mike Cavanaugh is going to be talking about is favorite subject of mine: how to hold gross online. Mm. You know, right. because people have this mythology that you can't have volume and gross. And the truth of the matter is, like I, I told Anthony yesterday, customers come in one at a time. They don't know that you're in trouble. They don't know you're having a bad month. They don't know you need to make your stair step bonus. They don't know any of that. Mm -hmm. Whether they come in on the keyboard or whether they come in on person or on the phone, however that customer comes to you, they don't know you need the unit. They don't care either. Right? No, I they mean, don't. They have their, their own needs. And I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting what you say. When we look at our best dealers, it's because their value is so strong. It's so clear. You know, what they're bringing to the table is clear beyond price, right? It's not just about the price. It's I'm going to get you in and out fast. Um, I, I know the car. I'm going to help you understand what car to get you in. It's all those other in, intangibles that have nothing to do with the actual price. So, so I'm with you. I had Frank Crenitti on my my show here a couple weeks ago, and you know he's selling. He sold 149 cars his best month. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And and, and that, the, he's an example. I mean, when you talk to Frank. I mean, you, it's very clear why he's successful. I mean, he doesn't even have to have leads come in. He has repeat customers. I'm sure that his entire city knows that he's the person to purchase from because he's built value that just is beyond most other salespeople. And now get this, two of my favorite people, two. Two of my <laughs> favorite people. Nixon, no, two, of my, two of my favorite people, Eric Milch and Sean Stapleton. Oh, for yes, dealer teamwork. <clears throat> and Eric, I ask them to let Eric speak. Usually they have James Klaus, but I ask them, please let Eric speak. Because Eric and I go way back before dealer teamwork, before he was with driving sales, we go back to Eric Milch when he was with Auction Direct. Wow. And that was the number one independent used car dealer in the country. Thousands of units, one price online. He knows how to sell used vehicles online probably better than a lot of people. He's a co-founder of Dealer Teamwork, but he also is an expert on, on how to sell pre-owns. And we need we needed some pre-owned expertise on my stage. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I'm assuming you'll have some independent dealers there as well. We've huh? got some independents coming. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And of course, I have no idea what Sean Stapleton's going to speak about. I mean, he just gets up there and he goes and you light the fuse and it blows up. And um, 45 minutes later, I jerk him off the stage. He, he has so much information. It's incredible. Sean Stapleton is, is a wizard in so many, in so many expertises. Dealer teamwork has gone from zero to a multi-million dollar corporation overnight. I mean, they're, they're, they're really making a lot of headway with what they do. Yep. And that's and, tough to do. What's that? That's tough to do to scale a business like that. Right. I mean, we obviously know about that starting from zero dealers that we have, we have 12,000 franchises to scale a business like that is tough. So I got impressive. another, another woman to talk about. Who's that? MC Watson. You know, I don't know MC very well, but I've heard great things. 
you will hear greater things about MC Watson. Well, MC Mary Catherine. Oh, that's yeah. what MC stands for. Okay. Yeah, Mary Catherine. Just she said she just calls herself MC because it's too long to write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like MC. She's she's not Mary. She's Mary Catherine. You know, it, it, it has to be all at once. I ask for Mary Catherine to speak on a specific subject. Data mining, equity mining, auto mastermind, automotive mastermind is the leaders in my estimation, in my way of thinking in data mining, equity mining. I mean, there's two or three companies doing it. I believe they're the best. And she is the best of that best. I mean, she, she's, she's one of their senior, senior reps. Um, I like Automotive Mastermind a lot. And I, I interviewed her online as I'm interviewing you right now, or you're interviewing me more. more so. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize I was I was the one being interviewed today. Hey, you this is a conversation. You, Go back you and turned forth. turned it around on you me. Know how we do it. <laughs> but anyway, MC Watson, and I've given her a prime space on the speaking time. And, and by the way, I gave you a great time too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, thank you. I thought you'd like that. You know, so... MC Watson, she's going to talk about data mining, equity mining, you know, how to apply it, how to do it. If you want to scroll back through my, my videos on, on Jim Ziegler's Facebook page here, look up her, her video and watch yeah, it too, it because she's somebody you need in the WIA. Yes. Yes. I'm going to connect with her. Definitely. There's Definitely. another woman you need to get involved in, in WIA, Amelia Sapowski. Where, who's she with? Starling Chevrolet in Florida. Okay. Um, she's a, and, I, and I'm going to predict she is a budding superstar. Uh, you know, Amelia Sapowski. Okay, I'll I'll check remember her out. I, I said that name. She is, she's got, she's got the heart. She has the drive. Um, she's doing the numbers. She's going to be a, one of those superstar performers we all hear about. And I, I wanted to, go on record of saying that before everybody else did. Yeah. We'll have to get her in the women in automotive loop. We need, we need yes, more women you like do. that. Stores. Yes, you do. Yes. I Now I've given everybody their kudos. Yes. I'm excited, Jim. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. We got, we've got some really great speakers on this lineup and, 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 and true car, you, you guys have got over 12,000 dealers now. Yeah, so we have 12,000 franchise dealers. We have 4,000 independent dealers. And we've moved from just, not just being a lead provider, obviously, but also, you know, trade. We have a trade tool that dealers are using to acquire cars more efficiently. Now, you, know your, you know your handler. You know who your handler is. Who's my Sharon, handler? Sharon Majors. <laughs> <laughs> she's the one she's the one that book, booked you to speak with me yes, yes. <laughs> i didn't know i had a handler but yes. yeah yeah you got a handler yeah. sharon majors my people she, she has bought 15 tickets anthony bought 12 she's bought 15 for internet battle plan yes and basically if anybody that works in a car dealership we don't want people that don't work in car dealerships. You know, don't don't vendors be latching onto your free tickets. But you've got 15 tickets to, that you will give away if they just get in touch with their true car rep and say, Carrie's got some free tickets. Yeah. So reach out to your true car rep. You can reach out to me. We, you know, we don't, we have a limited number of tickets, so we can't give them to everybody. But if you reach out to me, we'll do our best. And, and just you give have me to work the, at the dealership. Get me their name, their dealership, their email address, and I'll issue the free ticket. To, from you and I'll send you the bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. Reach out to me directly or your rep or your true car rep. Exactly. And um, we, we've got that to give away. Oh my gosh. We have been on an hour oh my and gosh. 10 minutes. This, you know, Jim, this is what we always do. We, we rarely have. A, a We're such great friends. We're, we, you know, I mean, this this is absolutely a, a friendship that has started out so rocky. It was so funny. I know? appreciate you, Jim. I appreciate everything you've done for the industry and particularly for me. You know, we started out rocky, but you know, we're yeah. here now. We're here now. <laughs> and, um, 
<laughs> yeah, and it, it's amazing. I've seen True Car evolved. I had something to do with the evolution, and yes. I, I'm I'm pleased with where you guys are headed. Um, I don't like your little bearded guy in the commercial. Though. Don't you don't like him, still. I know. You I don't like him. I don't like him. No. Working on that, but but you know what? I at the end of the day. Um, you're, you are a part of our history. We, we definitely are <laughs> because of you in the history books, but we're not done. You know, I mean, we're all, you always have to evolve. And that's why I say to dealers, you always have to evolve because the minute that you think that you're, you've arrived, things change. And, and we, we have a lot of work to do still. Well, anyway, let's see, how can I get in touch with you? Let me, let me change the, the, the write up on the side. Oh, hi, Melissa. I saw Melissa's on here. Oh, Melissa, yeah. Melissa, are you going to come to Battle Plan? I Melissa, mean, uh, come. Is, she, is she farting around? I mean, you know, Melissa, you coming or not coming? I haven't you seen know. her in so long. Yeah, well, she was in Detroit, remember? Yeah, That's the last she was time there. we saw her yeah. in Detroit, uh, three battle plans ago. Yeah. She Melissa. needs to get, get on a plane and come on. Be there. Okay, Ashley MacArthur, she's yeah. on. Orin awesome. Checkmate Hudson. Now you don't know him. I don't know Orin. He's a chess guy. He's huh. in the National Speakers Association with me. Nice. And you know, he and I have had a great relationship through the years. He he mentors young children in you know underprivileged situations. Um, I love that. And what he does is he does it through his chess ministry. He teaches them how to play chess, and he he can beat anybody I know in in three minutes. I mean, he, he's a, he's phenomenal. And Oren might come to Battle Plan. Um, he's not going to be able to speak or anything because we're all full up. But he he might show up as a guest. You know, no, I love that. I love that. Yeah, he'll have, somebody, a lot, he'll have a lot in common with our industry because we're 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 an industry that gives back to the community. Okay, we got Scott Dubinoff. Let's see, I don't Scott. Know. I don't Where's know Scott. Scott with? I'm trying to remember. I like that name, Dubinoff. I, do. I know. Yeah. It sounds very The name's intense. got muscles. And yeah. prestigious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, now how can I get in touch with you? All right, so I'm on Facebook. I'm under Carrie Reese, which is my maiden name, Wise. I go by Carrie Wise, but on Facebook, it's Carrie Reese Wise. And then I'm on LinkedIn, too. That's another way to connect with me under Carrie Wise. So. You could reach out to me, um, and I'd love to hear from you. Okay, let me put that right. Okay, okay. If they find you on Facebook, it'll be it'll look like that. Yes, yes it will look like that. Oh, look at David Cribbs is on one of my favorites as well. I love Cribbs. Cribbs is a is a great friend to me. Yeah. Yes, oh, what about um, Larry Little? You know, Larry. Larry's coming. Larry's coming. Yeah, I heard. I Larry heard. Little's coming. You know, I met him at your last internet battle plan. He was yeah, in the audience. Yeah, from West Memphis. Mm-hmm. We joke about West Memphis. Do you? You know, you know, I went to Memphis State University until I got thrown out. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I was I was thrown out by Dean McDaniel, the head dean of the college. How long did you last? Um, two semesters. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was a bouncer in a nightclub called the Tonga Club on West Madison street. And I got in a little trouble and made some headlines and <laughs> the college <laughs> couldn't take it's a different story. <laughs> the college couldn't take the heat and the headlines. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big guy. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was, a, I was, a, I was a tough guy. I was a bar fighter and a drag racer when I was younger. Miss Debbie, Miss Debbie tamed the lion. Oh, she tamed it, huh? <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. <laughs> she did. That's amazing. Cribs is on Melissa. Oh, and that's good who you're talking about. What's that? Some good people on. We got some great the whole, people the on. The whole hour and a half. What are we at? Hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, Larry Little says, Jim the Bouncer. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Larry, sometime you and I have a talk about my my adventures in Memphis. <laughs> I want to be there to hear these war stories. I was 19 years old, and you know it it was during the Vietnam War, and you know just um, it was a pretty rough club I was working in, and um, I I cracked some heads. I think you'd be a really good bouncer. I could I could see no one. You know I don't see people messing with you. 
in in those days, no, 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 no. You did. If, if I got in a bar fight, they would. If the police found out it was me, they would demand at least two squad cars. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggler, two squad cars. <laughs> you, you, uh, you you lifted weights too, right? I remember back in the day, you were a weightlifter or something. I bench well. I bench pressed four hundred and fifty pounds most of my adult life. Wow. And um, that's how I got the bad knees. Uh, I fell down with 700 pounds on my shoulders, stepping off a squat rack, you know, and, and busted my, that's why I have the knee problems today. And um, there's videos online of me when 66 years old was still benching 300. Gosh, if you put in awesome. Jim Ziegler, 300 pound bench press, there's a whole bunch of videos will come up of me lifting some heavy weight in my late sixties. <laughs> Wow. Wow. That's why I'm saying you'll never retire. You know? Never retire. You know, I got a million stories. I was I was one of the original fighters in the the battle of the toughest before it became UFC. That's what it was called. The battle of the toughest. The battle of the toughest. It was same corporation. Um, my last fight, I got knocked out in 45 seconds. Wow. I mean, I. I got knocked out. I got some photographs of a big guy. Just, I, I mean, not knocked out, knocked out of sleep. I was asleep, knocked out, <laughs> carried wow. out, carried out, knocked out, you know, and that's that, that retired me from my battle of the toughest um, career. <laughs> 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 but you know what? There were 10,000 people in the Coliseum that night. There were only 10 of us fought. Yeah, only you said only ten of you fought. Only ten of us fought. You can be a participant or you can be a spectator. And even though as a participant I lost that fight, I wasn't a spectator. Well, that's true. There's a good <laughs> quote about that. There's a good quote. I don't remember who said it, but it's like you know people will criticize you, but they're not in the ring, right? Exactly. The ring. There's all I, kinds of haters. They'll say they'll give you advice, but they're not in the ring with you. Well, you know, it's honest to God, I've done more on my bucket list than most people. Right, you have. <laughs> Ultimate Fighting Championship. Let's check that one off. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't let people define you. You've lived life, you know, and I, I mean, I feel the same way. I haven't been around as long as you, but, you know, you got to get in the ring. I got underwear older than you. <laughs> you got to get in the ring. That's why I came to True Car. <laughs> well, listen, you definitely got in the ring. I got in but, the ring. But it's gotten better. It's, it's gotten, gotten better. better. Carrie, we're going to sign it off. We've been on an hour and 20 minutes. I know. Thank oh, you. This is the best show. Stayed on for so Everybody, long. please share this broadcast. Share yeah. this broadcast. Share. Everybody, right now, hit the share button. Even if you're watching a replay, still hit the share button right now. Share this broadcast. Absolutely. You, you are loved and appreciated. I'll see you in a couple weeks. All right. I feel the same way. Bye, Jim. Bye, everybody.